I shot him. I guess it went through the door and went through him and went through the wall. A 15-year-old boy and his 12-year-old sister had been home alone in the Mount Royal Village subdivision. And at about 2.30, a pair of home invaders tried the front and back doors, then broke a back window. The brother grabbed his father's assault rifle and knew what to do with it. Two suspects showed up at Tomball Hospital. One, the adult, had multiple gunshot wounds and was flown to Memorial Hermann Hospital. But under laws such as those in Iowa, those children wouldn't have been able to defend themselves, especially if the weapons they used were their parents' registered smart guns. So as the establishment continues to put perfume on the pig known as gun control, remind them that the Second Amendment shall not be infringed. You can find more reports at Infowars.com. Now in other news, we've been talking about groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and how they're using social media to bolster their ranks. And while that is a problem, the government, in my opinion, is putting a very unfair uh, mandate on social media to police these things. And we see FedTech Summit social media as an informer network. Government demands tech companies find solution to terror recruiting. And it says talks between the government and Facebook, Twitter, and Google and Microsoft will center on the use of social media to recruit terrorists, according to CNN. And they're saying uh, finding potential terror agents and inspire them to become, to become violent and coordinate attacks. Of course, that's what the, uh, some of these groups are using these social media platforms for. Once again, I don't encourage that. They could stop this stuff simply by shutting down the Twitter accounts of groups like ISIS, but they don't do that because they can track their activity. Even though they're tracking the activity, they're not stopping the terror attacks that follow from the activity. It's very uh, strange to me indeed. Also, we see here domestically, Pepsi is now going to label some of their products non-GMO in uh, their labeling efforts because you recall previously, Pepsi had been against labeling GMOs uh, back in 2013. They spent close to $9 million fighting labeling of their products as GMO, but now it seems like they have conceded, at least in a small way, to the demands and will of the people. And lastly, before we go into more special reports in our next segments, Marine Corps ordered to make job titles gender neutral. Officials asked to review job titles and eliminate the word man whenever possible. So basically, uh, they want the ladies to feel a little more comfortable when they are in their roles. It seems like the uh, G.I. Jane uh, type of reality is becoming more of a reality every single day. So stay tuned. After this break, we'll have some special reports, one from Harry Dent as well as John Bound, coming up right here on the InfoWars Nightly News. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. We've had numerous financial experts on the show Gerald Salente, Harry Dent, many others as well. And now we have this article from Michael Snyder Stock market crash 2016. This is the worst start to a year for stocks ever. And they say when CNN starts sounding like the economic collapse blog, you know that things are really getting bad. So personally, I don't own any stocks. Uh, now, I do understand it's more than just whether or not you own stocks, how it affects you. I saw that movie, uh, what's it called? The Big Short recently has Christian Bale, a lot of guys in it, talking about the stock market crash of many years ago. And it affects many people who have nothing to do with the stock market. It may affect your employer or you know if you rent a home or things to that nature. So it's more than just if you don't have any skin in the game or so you think, it can still affect you in ways that you're not anticipating. A Wall Street sinks as China turmoil hits global shares. Another great article detailing uh, the issues that are going on over there. Also Dow drops sliding at close to cap a worst ever start to year. So it's not just Infowars or anybody else. A lot of people are warning about this now, personally, you know, a lot of people have different things they do to get prepared. Some people invest in stocks or bitcoins or gold or any number of things. You know, I can't tell you what to do. I just would advise anybody to uh, save money the best you can. I know uh, a lot of people find it difficult. They have large families, they have medical bills, any number of other things that may impede your ability to save. But save what you can. Also, be very weary of where your money goes. Do you really need to buy the biggest, best, newest? Can you get by with something that's a little cheaper, but still cost effective and solid? And with more on this, we have Harry Dent, who is on the Alex Jones Show today, warning of such things and what you need to do to prepare yourself in 2016. The point is what you've said is basically happening just as you said it would, just as your last predictions came eerily true. Tell us what's happening currently and then what you expect now that the optics are closer and clearer with the electron microscope, what the next shoe to drop is, Mr. Dent. Well, again, I've been looking at China, number one, because they have the greatest bubble in the world. They have overbuilt their economy for 12 to 15 years in the future. Massive migration into cities where people don't really have jobs. They have them building stuff for nobody. And that's what they've been doing for 15 years. I have never seen a bubble to compare to this. So I'm saying, look, we have a bubble around the world. 
in demographic spending, which keeps declining in more countries. And I turn, we can predict this by country. Japan was the first to peak, and then the U.S., and now Europe. But we also have the greatest debt bubble in modern history, two to four times what we've seen back in the roaring 20s, Last time we had a debt bubble. And all we need, like in 2008 with the subprime crisis, is a trigger to cause this debt bubble to reset and, and deleverage, or, or what I call a financial detox. And, and this is happening. I've been looking at China, number one, because it had the greatest stock bubble in the shortest period of time with the least sophisticated investors who were jumping out of the real estate bubble there to get into the stock bubble, and now it's collapsing. And the government is doing the same thing, Alex, it did in 1929 when the U.S. stock bubble started to burst. Both bubbles went down 42% in two and a half months, and then the government steps in and starts buying its own stock market to try to prop it up, and it only lasts about four months before the bubble collapse and get worse. You cannot stop a bubble from bursting once you create it. The only way you can stop a bubble is not to create it in the first place, and nobody gets that. We are in a bubble around the world. Commodities, we've been predicting for years, have already collapsed. Nobody thought oil would be at $32 a barrel. We said it would be $20 to $30 a barrel years ago. Uh, nobody thought that, that uh, you know, the, the U.S. bubble would burst in real estate in 2005. We said it'll burst. Now it's going to burst more. So investors and people need to say, look, we've had this great bubble. It's been artificially stimulated by governments around the world, especially the Fed here in the United States. Take your gains from the bubble and turn it back into cash and liquidity so you can survive this crash that's going to happen. It is going to be worse. And we just said this in our January newsletter. 2016 is going to go down, I think, is the worst year for the stock market, not since 2008, not since 2001, since 1931, because this crash is going to happen rapidly, and it's starting in China, and that's what I've been looking for. I finally told people late last year, gosh, the thing I've been looking for in the last couple of years is for a major bubble to burst, not just oil, which was first. But the second one is China's bubble bursting, and they're not going to be able to So stop. you're saying we're facing another Great Depression generally or the same numbers in the stock market? Yeah, I, actually, we're facing a bigger crash than 2008, which was about 55% in 17 months. I think we're going to see 70% in the next year, year and a half, and ultimately a little more than that down the road. Um, we are going to see a Great Depression. We started to see the Great Depression, which I forecast back in 2007 and 2008. We started to see so that. So you're saying the new Great Depression is basically months away? Yes. I think it's going to happen between this year, 2016, and 2022. And, they, and, and they're getting ready to take the guns on top of it. I tell you, this is a recipe for just explosions. Please continue. Yeah. I mean, and, and again... People don't realize, nobody's seen this happen in their lifetime. The last time we had a bubble burst in debt and financial assets, stocks, commodities, real estate, everything, was in the early 30s, and the stock market went down 89% in two and a half years. Real estate went down 26%, 30, uh, 61% in New York, never came back for decades. Stocks didn't come back for 25 years. This is something major. You have to get out of the way of this. It's a matter of survival. And then when these bubbles burst, whether it's real estate in New York or beachfront property in Florida or anywhere else, you're going to be able to buy stuff at rates you will not believe if you protect your wealth now and wait until the crash now, I understand you're about surviving and thriving in bad times, but getting back to your demographic cliff, all your charts, the things you, you know, you, you used at Bit Bain to be able to successfully predict things in all your best selling books, specifically, I mean, you know, because at a certain point it does get down to tea leaves on, on, on exact times, two months, three months, six months. I mean, we'll be in a great depression. They'll be telling us everything's great. Like they tell us Obamacare is free, but how deep will this have to get before they admit it's a depression. I mean, obviously, most third world countries are already in a depression. They're in yeah. flames. So, so there is a global depression. It's just not evenly distributed. But how long until it hits here? How bad will it be distributed, say, here versus Australia versus China versus Europe versus Russia? Where are the worst places? Where are the best places? Okay. First of all, 
we've been waiting for a long time to see. I mean, the governments have been keeping this bubble going by printing trillions of dollars, like $10, 12000000000000 trillion in the last several years. They've been filling in the downturn.